Show Chiku Films. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Asian film fanatic. The following movie I'm about to review is a comedy drama and wonder with longevity unparalleled in Japanese cinema. Right! The first of a whopping 49 films is the longest running movie series in Japan to star the same actor in a continuous lead role. Unbelievable! It's humorous, sentimental, bittersweet. From Shibamada, he's the world's most unluckiest bachelor. This is the one, the only, Torasan, our lovable tramp. The literal title of this movie is Yoboku wa Tsurayo, roughly translating into, it's tough being a man. All Torosan movies pretty much follow the same formula. Torosan, a traveling salesman, periodically visits his auntie and uncle's sweet shop. A black sheep of the family, his arrivals usually cause humorous alarm within, except for his stepsister, Sakura. After some family conflict, he hits the road and falls for the women he befriends. He makes another return to the sweet shop, where eventually, more conflict arises. Just before leaving, he coincidentally reunites with those he met on the road. Elated, Torsan pursues his crush until he finds out she's taken. Feeling jilted, he heads back on the road. Like Charlie Brown in his football, Torsan will always chase after his unrequited loves, but will never succeed. In the franchise, they call these women Madonna's. Played by Kyoshi Atsumi, Torosan's appeal is in his combination of being childlike and unrefined. This contrasts humorously with the plight and well-mannered norms of Japanese society. <laughs> Sakura, played by the lovely Cheko Bashio, is often the understated heart of the movie, expressing serious care for her stepbrother's well-being. Gin Maeda plays Hiroshi, a factory worker and Sachiko Mitsumoto plays the first Madonna. Notable veterans Chishu Ryu plays the town priest, and Takeshi Shimura plays Hiroshi's father. A majority of the Torosan films are written and directed by the prolific Yoji Yamada. This one is co-written with Azuma Murasaki. The composer of nearly all the Torosan movies is Nazumi Yamamoto. I've grown fond of certain recurring themes throughout the series. I even bought the CD. I particularly like Torosan's theme, sung by Kyoshi Atsumi. I also liked the emotionally nostalgic strings of the reunion with Sakura. and the redemptive theme of Shibamata. The legacy of Torosan started as a short-lived TV series from 1968 to 1969, the finale of which had the character die from a snake bite. But his character proved so popular they decided to revive him. Between 1969 until his death in 1996, 48 movies were made. I've seen all of these at least twice. In 1997, Sword of like Star Wars, a special edition of an existing movie was re-released, using CGI to add a few extra scenes. There's even a museum that's dedicated to Torosan in his hometown of Shibamata, and right next door is the Yoji Yamada Museum. Surprisingly, another Torosan movie has been released in 2019, reuniting most of the surviving cast from the previous films. I have yet to see the latest one, and I'm rather eager to do so. The first few times I watched Torosan, I'll admit, I just didn't love it. But the more I watched, the more it grew on me. And even though I still think the series mostly rates kind of average, there are a few gems I warrant watching again. I think the first movie is a great place to start, as it introduces everyone, and in my opinion, is one of the best. A light-hearted, humorous movie with ample heart, Torosan is a historic film franchise with a longevity that's worth appreciating. 
Now I'm going to go over the entire movie with spoilers. Our story begins with Torosan reminiscing nostalgically of the time his late father punched him so hard in the head he bled. Ah, the sweet memories of abuse. That's Kashi. 20 years later, he returns to reunite with his auntie and uncle. They think he's made it as a respectable man, but really, he's just a crude peddler. After a tearful reunion with his sister, Torsan declares he's gonna go take a piss. Yeah, that's classy. The next morning, Sakura has a formal matchmaking appointment, but her uncle is too hungover to accompany her. Unwisely, they agree to let Torsan go in his place. At a very fancy hotel, you can guess what happens next, but it's still fun to watch. Torsan slurps loudly, blunders about, tells crude jokes, discloses family baggage, and ruins the meeting. Later, Sakura learns to her expectation that she's been formally declined. Torsan runs into a younger, more lackluster sales subordinate and shows him how it should be done. Returning home, he gets chewed out for blowing the matchmaking introduction. Torsan fights back, trades insults, and slaps Sakura. It's always kind of shocking to see him slap Sakura. She's definitely the least deserving. I think that's about the only time I can recall Torsan doing something like that though. But Torsan also gets his share of knocks from his uncle, who says it's not his knuckles that hit him but the knuckles from his dead father! Man, that's savage! After things calm down, Sakura patches up with Torosan, and they cap it off with a dirty face gag. <laughs> the next morning, Torosan's guilt drives him to hit the road. A month later, the shop receives a postcard from the priest's daughter saying she and her father ran into Torosan in the city of Nara. They remember each other from childhood. Tagging along, Torosan playfully interacts with the two. They make a corny photo joke where the priest says butter instead of cheese. Back at the shop, there's hints Sakura may have an interest in Hiroshi. Unexpectedly, Fuyuoko arrives. Even more surprising, Torosan isn't far behind. After scolding the factory workers about Sakura, they challenge Torosan to a confrontation by the river. Speaking with Hiroshi, Torosan learns about his crush on Sakura. So he gives him some advice on how to approach her. It's in the glances and eye contact, he says. The eyes do the talking. Trying this out on Fuyuoko, it's obvious how ineffective his advice is. Later, he drops by Sakura's workplace and tries to tell her about Hiroshi's desire, but can't articulate it. Subsequently, he tells Hiroshi he tried, but to just give her up. This causes Hiroshi to pour his heart out to Sakura. And abruptly quit the factory. Learning of Torosan's blunder, Sakura chases after Hiroshi. I know it seems kind of underdeveloped, but I really love how they don't even say anything to each other. They just let the music and longing glances do the talking. It's in the eyes after all. For me, these are the best scenes of the movie. <laughs> they both board the train and ride off into the night. When Sakura comes back, she announces their plan to marry. Torosan's mistake actually brought Sakura and Hiroshi together. This is Torosan at his finest here. He's the mistake that was meant to be made. At the wedding ceremony, Hiroshi's estranged father shows up and makes an apology to Hiroshi for being unworthy as parents. After wishing them well, Torosan praises Hiroshi's father, bringing everyone to tears and cheers. With Sakura moved out, Torosan visits Fuyoko. They spend the day together, betting on a motorcycle race, eating yakitori, and having a good night. Filled with happiness, Torosan dances back home. The next day, dressed like a dork, 
He plans on going fishing with Fuyoko, only to see her with another man. Those chilling cicadas! It's the sound of death for Torasan. He finds out the man is Fuyoko's groom and is crushed. Sneaking back home, he overhears the others making fun of him. As more gossip and disparagement comes out, he grabs his booze and hides in the closet. When they awkwardly stumble upon him, he abruptly decides to leave. At a cafe, he angrily berates his sales subordinate to grow up and get lost, smacking the kid when he begs to stick around. In a moment that's both funny and sad, he complains about the kid's dependence on others while eating the guy's leftover ramen. Slowly, he begins to weep. I love the simultaneous brevity of comedy and weight of tragedy. Mixing in multiple layers of emotion like that makes for great writing and acting. A year later, Sakura shows her newborn boy to the priest. They joke that he looks like Torsan. A postcard arrives for Fuyoko from the train. He nostalgically writes about how fast time has gone by and how happy he is for his sister. Reflecting on his foolish behavior, he tells her to forget about his conduct. Back to settling on the street, he's allowed his sales pal to stick around after all. With the music ending on an uplifting note, we know all is well. The End So that's Torasa and our lovable tramp. You know, it's kind of tough being a man, especially if you're a man-child like Torasa. Making it as a successful and desirable male is not easy in this world. It's probably no coincidence that the English title of this movie was retitled Our Lovable Tramp. The closest Western counterpart we have to Tora Song that comes to my mind would be Charlie Chaplin. They're both carefree characters who can effectively combine comedy, tragedy, and drama. I see a good amount of similarity between The Little Tramp and Peddling Drifter. These dreamers both have an immature playfulness about them frequent adolescent crushes on women, and get by living a poor man's lifestyle. Kyoshi Atsumi is just as iconic as Torasan, and is somewhat regarded as a national treasure in Japan. I liked it as a character-driven film, hitting the right notes of cheerfulness and sadness. What makes Torasan a little more distinct are his crude jokes and straightforward thoughts. Funny and heartwarming, if you watch enough Torasan, he becomes a familiar friend you welcome, and sometimes unwelcome, over a span of 50 years. Torasan may be gone, but his legacy lives on as our own wonderful, lovable, square-faced tramp. I'm the Asian Film Fanatic, and I'll see you later.